So uh, I was riding in the car with my boy Chris. We had just left JR Crickets. He was driving me off at Sunday's house. We were just in the car and Streets 94.5, I hear him, yo, yo, this karate chop, you know, dropping bombs. New Future just bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back. And like my face just lit up. I was like, wow, it's my song on the radio right there, you know. I usually have like a nice checklist in my head as I'm looking at the record. You know? uh, a naked girl on the cover is instant buy. Always naked women cover fire, 100%. Pete Rock, Primo, Timbaland, and Neptunes. Okay. Like, that's that's my production style. You mix all those people together. I was making beats in seventh grade before I even knew what sampler was. You know what I'm saying? Because I was rapping since third grade. So by that time, I figured out, like, man, I need something to, like, put my words on. <laughs> Past 12 years, I would have to say I have two. Um, one is my first day there and my first session with Jay, um, where we recorded Stick to the Script and Streets is Talking on the same day. Um, it was a memorable experience. It was my first time. My first time working with them, my first time really being, you know, in, in close quarters with them and just getting to exchange ideas and talk about music. You know, and it definitely, um, Gave me a confidence boost. <laughs> mixed many a record and uh, mixed and track many a record on this thing, many a classic. Baseline definitely represented the Rockefeller era, and I think Rebel Bass just kind of represents the future. Which is yet to come, you know. The sitcom itself, or like a piece of a movie or something. Tape this nigga, man. Yeah. You taping him? Yeah. One of the joys for me in the music business is watching a new artist develop into their own. I mean, that shit just bring me joy, like to see artists come from nothing and then, you know, they know he has a name. That's Kanye West. That's Kanye West. He signed an autograph. I love that shit. And right now, this nigga, he's just delivering it. And the passion he got for his music, I don't think it's going to stop. Kanye came in motherfucking did his job, did he? Did he not? That five-hour energy music. Like you can hear the bounciness. No, like, like, you hear you the bounciness that you got. You hear me going like this in the headphones. We nah. here making beats for this guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> niggas yeah. don't be having the knock and the bounce. You got pause. The knock, niggas had a keyboard. I could have made some shit right now on the spot right here, real quick. I've been drumming since I was a little kid. Later on in the year, I started, you know, getting into production. <laughs> That sound, that's, that's, right just, nah, that's oh, a whack sound. Nah, that's not crazy. <laughs> <laughs>
paso me dice So basically, uh, when I made this beat, um, I started off with a sample, you know, like always. And you know, it was, it was cool because I found a couple pieces in the record, so I got to have an intro and the main piece. So yeah, you know, I, I started this beat on uh, the boss of my operation, the ASR-10. I did something different this time because I used Pro Tools to do the drum. You know, the whole Drake situation uh, came about. Um, it's kind of funny because. <clears throat> He followed me on Twitter one day and I didn't even realize because, you know, I'm not necessarily checking who's following me every day and keeping updated. But uh, basically, I was wondering, like, why are people asking me crazy stuff about Drake on Twitter all the time? Like, it was strange. Some dude wanted me to, it's like, can you please retweet my painting of Drake? So, you know, he'll, uh, <laughs> he'll see it. And I was like, why would I do that? I don't, I don't even know Drake. So, um, he was like, he follows you. I was like, oh shit, that's tight, you yeah. know. Um, so, anyways, I didn't necessarily just bombard him with beats or nothing immediately because I don't think he was working on his album or whatever. And I was in Hawaii with my family, um, and I was Drake was just playing on the radio nonstop, like just literally every song was Drake. I remember going up to the room and I was like, man, I'm, I'm gonna send him some beats. Like, what am I doing? I'm fucking up. So. Um, I hit him on Twitter, told him I wanted to send him beats, and he was like, please do. I sent him, and I swear, like, maybe in 20 minutes, he was like, I want this one and this one, and that's kind of where it started. The shit started with them, the spins that uh, played the keys out, you know what I'm saying? We're like... with it because you know what I'm saying in the time where a lot of shit is like similar even me and Spence were talking about the other day we were like man I'm convinced it doesn't sound like anything else this which is the studio Woo! <laughs> wow so is this like the renaissance on the road yeah this is, this is actually the same exact software same exact uh, systems. Uh, it's what it is today. Yeah, y'all like everybody else. We we want to win. If Fed told me you how I felt about the rap game, they relocate and change their name. I was always fascinated with the way a record looked. It looked like a toy, right? Because you know colors and mm -hmm. you know Motown, seeing the 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 map and the spinning around and. That's what I remember, and my mother used to always say, don't you ever touch the top of that record, you hold it from the side. My grandfather lived in Brooklyn. I started to get fascinated with the whole New York scene because we used to always go every summer to stay with him. Right. Once we started staying with him, and I started seeing the B-Boys and things like that, I was there for the for the Black on 77, I was there. You know, and, and going back to Texas, going, yo, you won't believe what, what we've seen in New York because you don't see that back in Texas. You right. know? Yeah, I used to 
doing it. Watching Picasso, like, like you know, I've been sitting here, you know, watching the vibe come and go. We got like, we got like five hits already. Two days, forty-eight hours, cooking up. Actually, Frell will have a beat in his head. He'll put it down. He'll have a sequence of raw idea. He may have some drums laid down. Um, the drums may sound shitty as hell. They may sound crummy. But it'll be a good groove. And then I'll hear it and I'll try to lace it. I'm like a, to me, I consider myself like a band. You know what I mean? Like, you got a song, let me be your band fill it in what I can, make it sound good, do what I can, make sure it's a dope song. Sometimes the song is already done, maybe, maybe just a beat. And it probably doesn't need anything, so I actually might take stuff out, you know what I mean? Or add effects, just make it sound interesting, you know what I mean? Because music, when you listen to music, is, you gotta take it into a zone. Every sound is associated with a 
with a feeling. If a snare is banging, pop! It's gonna hit you, you know, and you're just gonna make you make your neck snap. You feel that snare snap, it's gonna make your neck snap. Cop! Boom! You hear that kick, it's gonna hit you in the back. But boom! You hear that snare, it hits you in the in the in the back of your neck. So it's like when you hear that kick and snare, it just gets you in that groove. But if it's weak, you ain't gonna feel that way, you know what I mean? So you gotta have that Sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't have to sound like that. He's talking at me instead of telling me my intelligence. Stab me, but he says he'll go through me. I'm a thrasher, I'm a thrasher, I'm a thrasher, I'm a thrasher, I'm a thrasher. I'm a thrasher. That's a song called Thrasher. It's like, like a skater. Um, talk shit night. Anthem. I love the second part better, I just gotta make this first part better. But I love this part, this is my favorite. <laughs> Make sure niggas and people understand every fucking word. Like you gotta be monotonous about like mm -hmm. you gotta be monotonous, you gotta be fucking methodical, you gotta be meticulous to every fucking it's beyond the words, it's punctuation. You know, when I say like oh play it, like go up dun 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 like I'm not even saying the note correctly, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just following you. Oh no.